Merry Christmas a and elves. Today we're gonna to make some bread for Christmas. Actually, it's gonna be for lunch tomorrow. Um, even if you're not a baker, this is so simple, anyone can do it. Um, no guns are involved in the making of this video, but we're gonna have fun. So this is super quick, four ingredients. We're just gonna use um, three cups of flour, one full teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of active dry yeast, and one and a half cups of warm water. Super simple. So, I am not always even particularly precise with my flour. Don't care. Some of you will be like having minor heart attack watching me do that. So, see, don't care. I'll just take a little bit of that off one. That's why you need strong hands for shooting and for holding five pounds of flour. Whoop, two. And some people will actually use like a butter knife to make sure there are no holes. This is so simple. Even a minor error will be forgiving in that. So there are three cups here. Right quickly are one teaspoon of salt. Now one half teaspoon of yeast. Now this one I will be fairly precise on. All right. <clears throat> now with that, I'm actually going to mix those together in the flour before adding my water just so it's evenly dispersed. It's all about shot placement, right? So we are placing our shots evenly throughout our target here. All right, we'll put that down. And now the warm water. So that will activate our yeast. And just, now this is how simple it is. Take a wooden spoon, it'll be less sticky. All right. Well, it's still gonna be sticky. This is gonna look like a sticky mess and you're gonna be like, Oh my gosh, Kelly, what did you just have me make? Whoop. Like I said, it's a very forgiving recipe. Here's where the good hand strength for shooting comes back into play. Very quickly and easily, you can see that it made a dough ball. And honestly, that's about all I have to do. I don't want to overbeat it. Now I'm just going to pull off the excess here with my clean hands. Scrape down my sides here, make get as much in as I can. And that is it. Now the hard part comes in. This is why I go through so many aprons. All right, so the next step would be just to cover this very tightly with cling wrap. And the most difficult part of this entire recipe is waiting. So once we seal this, and if I ever had agreeable cling wrap, it would be awesome. Sometimes I get some, sometimes I don't. There we go. So nice and tightly, and we are going to let it rise anywhere from eight hours to 24 hours. So then it can be agreeable to your schedule. You could just plan it out the day before of when you want to bake this, um, and then back into your time of when you make this recipe. So I am just gonna set it aside, because my mom used to do this when I was a little girl. I'm gonna cover it also with a tea towel. I'm going to let it rest 8 to 24 hours. So this one's been in about 22. So I just turned it out onto this floured parchment paper here. So it looks like a blob of mess. And we don't even have to knead it because it'll just sort of ruin it. I have it on parchment paper because it's a little sticky right now. Even though I have a nice quartz countertop, which is always cold, it's going to transfer more easily when I have it on parchment paper. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my clean hands and all I'm going to do with it is just turn it. Now see it already stuck a little bit. 
we're gonna make it work here. I'm gonna keep turning and flowering. So if you are a gluten-free, don't watch this. Because bam. I'm actually gonna get a little more flour on me here. I'll just keep turning and turning. Get a little dizzy. Turn. Not actually kneading, just turning it out to get it into a ball here. A little extra sticky. Alright. Looks bally to me. So I'm gonna turn the pretty side up. And actually, I'm going to put some more flour down here. And now I'm going to, poof, let that rest for about 30 minutes. So come back in 30 minutes. All right, so thanks to technology, we are back. And so my oven was preheated for 30 minutes at 450 degrees with yeah, my little Dutch oven pan, pot, whatever you want to call it that we're going to bake this in. So it's important to preheat the pot in which you are going to bake the bread before we stick it in. So that is nice and hot. Let me get another trivet out here. Put the lid on it. Woohoo! Nice and steamy. So we're going to give it a little spritzer of a nonstick spray here. It would be worse than working this hard and have the darn thing stick. All right, so uh, I'm going to make an X with a nice sh sharp knife in the top of the bread. All righty. And well, I guess I needed a little bit of a sharper knife, but I've never been an artist. All right, and just in case I need, I am going to pre-treat my hands with a little more flour. Now this doesn't need to look gorgeous. We're just gonna plop it in. So, parchment paper makes it nice to pull up in. And poof, you can hear the little sizzle. All right, that's all we're gonna do. And then I am going to cover it. And we're gonna put it in this 450 oven for 30 minutes. Don't judge, I've been baking up a storm for two weeks. My oven's a little dirty. All right, so we'll set our timer for 30 minutes and then we'll be back. All right, so 30 minutes is up. Pull this bad boy out. Simply, not quite done. I'm gonna remove the lid. And as you can see, it's looking gorgeous, but not quite done. So we're gonna take the lid off and put it back in the oven center of the rack for maybe just another 10 minutes and crisp it up, get a nice brown crust, and then we'll take it out. Alrighty, so this hasn't been quite 10 minutes, but my crust is already nice and brown, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Wow! Oh, that smells absolutely heavenly. You can see how it just made that beautiful crust all around. So I'm going to transfer it out of uh, this pot and onto the cooling rack. All right, so it's up here. Something that I like to do is to take a little dab of butter. Why? I don't know. It gives it a beautiful little crust. My mom used to do it all the time when she was a good baker. Those days are long gone. So sort of in memoriam. Give it a nice yum factor. Who doesn't love butter? All right. So we're going to let this cool for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're going to slice it and see what it looks like and how it tastes. Okay, so our bread has cooled. It smells fantastic. You're going to want to use an extra sharp serrated knife to cut this. And as an aside, this little knife is a Cutco that my mom got 
for her wedding shower back in 1962. It has never been sharpened and it is amazing. If I weren't so frugal, I'd buy a whole new set of these. So let's see what we got. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna do it on the side here so I don't. That helps to not mush the crop as much. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So you can, see, oh my word, that is heavenly. So what you see is we get a beautiful crusty top and all these airy bubbles on the inside. That is just amazing. Still nice and warm. Hey, listen, life is short, eat the bread. I'm just gonna put a little bit of butter on that one. Let it melt up just a tiny bit. Another great thing to do would be to make a little dipping oil with it. This one happens to be infused with some different flavors. Uh, put that on. Look at the beautiful color in that olive oil. It really is worth it to pay for a good olive oil. There really is a difference. And we'll just put a hint of balsamic in that. Mix it up. Yeah, it's great. Take another little pinch of that. Mix that around. You know, when we get served this at restaurants between my husband and my daughter, we all sort of fight over who can get it the most. Mm. That is absolutely fantastic. Nothing short of that. Sorry to talk with my mouth full. Let's just try plain old butter. Remember, butter is great. Mm. Salted butter, of course, even better. Mm. Finish that up. So there you have it, a super simple four ingredient bread that everyone is going to enjoy. You can even slice this down and make fantastic sandwiches with it. You can even grill sandwiches with it. It's gonna be just as great. Now it certainly isn't going to keep very long like any bread that you might buy in the store. So I can't imagine that's gonna stay that long in your house anyway. So even though it's Christmas time and we're all busy baking cookies like I have been, switch it up and make a beautiful crusty bread. Your family's gonna love it. Life's short, eat the bread. I'm Kelly from Armed and Feminine. I hope you enjoyed this nice easy bread. The most difficult piece is waiting. Remember, it's your life, protect it. And eat the bread. And don't shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs>